One industry that used to be a big deal for Taiwan is watch and clock manufacturing. But with the industry having largely moved to China, where labor is much cheaper, what are all the clockmakers, distributors, and repairmen doing to find their niche in the 21st century? Our Sunday special report. Hey, 你好。都可以，嘿，这边好吗？好，好，谢谢。A clock and watch shop in Zhanghua. Most of the customers don't come for the clocks. They come for the noodles. 去食肉蛋，去食肉酱，因为卖面而带动我手表的能见度。Selling the noodles improves the visibility and the sale of the watches. Now, lots of people talk about that watch shop, the one that sells noodles. Now, the shop has a really unique character, even if it's a bit strange and wacky. Selling noodles in the watch shop was a daring move made by owner Jiang Junyu five years ago in an attempt to revive his dwindling business. Now, customers sit next to the display cases, gazing at watches while chewing on their noodles. That's all. Hi, me. My mean is Jian. Before I started selling noodles, it did happen that there was basically not a single customer all day long, not a single watch sold. We'd be happy if a couple of people came in to get repairs. The Zhang family's watch business began with Zhang Junyu's grandfather, and in the 1980s, when Taiwan's economy was booming, people would want to buy a watch as soon as they had disposable income. The business thrived. 手表当时呢，就被视为是一个很重要的装配。In those days, a watch was seen as an important accessory, connoting a certain status. When you shook hands, you chat about your make of watch. So it wasn't just a functional necessity; it was a status symbol. Back in the heyday of the watch industry, cheap Taiwanese labor attracted many global luxury watch brands to build their factories here. Almost all the components could be produced in Taiwan, apart from the most crucial element of all, the timekeeping watch movement. They made the cases in Tainan and the faces in Taichung. From the beginning, because Japanese companies set up factories in Taiwan, the watches being made tended to be quite refined. Later, even Swiss brands would come here to buy components. But with the arrival of cheap Chinese labor on the global market, Taiwan's clock and watch production lines moved overseas one by one. That, and the arrival of the smartphone era and a revolution in people's timekeeping habits, sent Taiwan's clock and watch industry into decline. This is one of Wanhua's old clock streets. It used to be the industry's biggest distribution center in northern Taiwan. Now, almost all the shops have shut for good. Only their signs still give off a faint glow. At the start, 20 or more years ago, there'd already be at least five or six customers waiting outside at around 8 a.m. before I even open the shop. Now there are none. Distributors are not getting any orders, and further down the line, repairmen face the same crisis. Once, Zheng Hengchang would get distributors crowding outside his workshop with watches for him to repair. Now he has to go out and hunt for customers himself. As Zheng inspects the broken watch, its owner Zhang Xinliang looks on anxiously, afraid that it can't be repaired. This is my father's death. This is a watch that was left to me when my dad passed away, so I always wear it at family gatherings. I wanted to feel like my dad is present. This watch has been given a timeless sentimental value thanks to the family memories it embodies, and that means it still has a place in Jung's repair workshop. His son markets the family business online. Hoping to showcase his father's professional skills in a more effective way, watch factories are also rebranding themselves, hoping the refined skills of a bygone era will find favor with young people once more. And this, this is the way. This is the connection, the connection. Twenty-eight-year-old Chen Weiming has inherited this clock factory from his father's generation. He positions traditional watches as a fashion item. 
with their various elements like the strap and the face, which can be customized and mixed up at will. Today, young people pay a lot of attention to their clothes and accessories, their external image. We hope that watches can become a symbol of individual style and taste, something that is really interesting and fun. Taiwan's traditional clockmakers, distributors and repairmen are all doing their best to survive in what has now become quite a niche market. The world may be changing faster than ever right now, but every now and then, people still need to check what time it is after all.